Muscle imbalances are pretty common. We all have muscle imbalances to some degree. Sometimes these imbalances are so obvious you can see them. For example, one arm or leg is often bigger and stronger than the other because we're either right or left-handed. Sometimes they're less obvious, but they can have severe consequences. When one set of muscles is stronger and larger or weaker and smaller than a corresponding set of muscles, then you have an imbalance. Muscle imbalances can lead you to developing an uneven physique, impaired performance, joint instability, reduced mobility, nagging pain, and even full-blown injuries. Opposing muscle groups need to coordinate for proper movement to occur. The strength and length of different muscle groups have an ideal ratio to allow for optimal function. When this ratio becomes out of whack, there are two main types of imbalance that occur. One, whole body muscular imbalance. Two, joint specific muscular imbalances. Whole body imbalances refer to imbalances between muscle groups in another region of the body. For example, a disproportionate strength level front to back or left to right. So between pushing and pulling patterns or even upper versus lower body strength levels. This often occurs with gym bros who focus on the mirror muscles and overdevelop their chest and biceps, but neglect their back. Joint specific muscular imbalances relate to an imbalance in muscle groups surrounding a specific joint. These muscle groups all work together to keep the joint centered for optimal movement. If one of these muscles becomes stronger, weaker, shorter, or longer than usual, an imbalance will occur and the joint's function will be compromised. Muscle imbalance can not only increase injury risk, affect the aesthetics of your physique, and lead to faulty joint mechanics, but they also impact the quality of your training. If you have significant muscle imbalances, you won't properly stabilize joints or produce maximal force. This will limit the loads you can handle in the gym and impede your size and strength gains. Maintaining the appropriate ratio of strength and muscle mass between muscle groups will help you reduce your injury risk and allow you to reach your strength and size potential long term. Experienced trainees have followed poorly planned programs in the past and have significant imbalances. Often they have some powerful muscles that overpower others. The culprit in well-trained lifters is usually training one muscle or muscle group with more volume or effort than others. At the other end of the spectrum, it's fair to say that beginners often face problems associated with muscle imbalance. Someone coming to the gym from a predominantly sedentary lifestyle is very likely to have imbalances from long periods of sitting with hips and glutes that are shortened or stiffened. It's common for them to also have issues with their traps, upper back, and shoulders from working asymmetrically on a computer or doing repetitive tasks. So it's safe to say that whether you're a complete beginner or a seasoned lifting veteran, muscle imbalances could be a problem for you. Sadly, the truth is that it's probably a case of when, rather than if, you will suffer from a muscle imbalance. Once the imbalance occurs, you'll have to work smart and hard to overcome it. So the question is, what can you do to fix muscle imbalances from hindering you? Listen up for four surefire fixes for muscle imbalances. Before I get into the four specific tips, let me give you one overarching theme that will serve you well in your efforts to eradicate imbalances. This is understanding that exercising correctly is a corrective exercise. If you make a concerted effort to lift with good form and control over a full range of motion following a well-designed training program, then your risk of developing significant muscle imbalances drastically reduces. In that sense, your training can become prehab and limit the chance of you developing imbalances, or at the very least, minimizing the impact of the imbalance. So with that fundamental principle covered, let's explore the four fixes in more detail. Fix number one, prioritize the weak side. Intermediate and advanced trainees should have full awareness of their weaknesses and be cognizant of the need to address them in their training. That means adjusting the volume and intensity of their workouts to compensate for weaknesses in one muscle group compared to another. Identifying weaknesses is critical to being able to fix them. There's no substitute for having a sense of your own weaknesses. If you're uncertain about doing this, consider working with a good coach who can help you assess your physique and strength levels across multiple groups. Once you've identified any imbalances and which muscle groups need strengthening, you can use this fix to close the gap in strength levels. Focusing on the non-dominant hand or side of your body in your workout and doing a little extra to bring them up to the same level as the dominant side is a simple and effective strategy. A simple way to do this is to start with your non-dominant side first in any set or routine when your energy and focus are at their highest. The biggest problem with this fix is figuring out how to manage your workout. Do you increase the volume of work on your weaker side or lessen the work on your dominant side to let your weaker side catch up? Again, it will depend on the imbalance and your ultimate goals. Here are effective ways to achieve that. Number one, match reps from the strong side to the weak side using rest pause. Number two, increase the weekly volume for the weaker side. In many cases, an increase of about 25% will quickly bring the weaker side up. In the first example, if your right side is stronger on single arm rows, you would perform a set for the right side. 
Say you get 10 reps, then you do the left, but you can only get eight reps. After the eighth rep, take a short 15 to 20 second rest or three to five deep breaths, then crank out some more reps for that left arm. You will probably get two to three more. In time, you'll find your weaker side catches up with your stronger side, and you can match reps without the need for rest pause sets. Bumping up your training volume for the weaker side is another effective strategy. For example, let's say your left shoulder is smaller and weaker than your right, and you do three sets of 10 reps of dumbbell side lateral raises per week. You could increase this by doing one extra set for your weaker left side weekly. So you do three normal sets of dumbbell laterals and then add in a single arm set for the left side. This means you end up doing three sets on your right side and four sets on your left. Pretty soon, your left shoulder will close the gap in size and strength. When using this strategy, end your first three sets when your weak side fails, even if your right has some reps left in the tank. If you do sloppy reps on your left to keep going while your right cranks out pristine reps, you'll only increase the muscle imbalance. Those sloppy reps on the left don't stimulate gains, while the textbook form you can hold on the right means they're stimulating the target muscle and the gap in size and strength will continue to widen. Fix number two, unilateral training. Arguably the most effective way to work on weaknesses is to do unilateral exercises, one arm and one leg at a time. Dumbbells, kettlebells, cables, and isolation exercises can all be great choices. The list of unilateral exercises is almost endless, but some of the most common are alternative dumbbell curls, one arm dumbbell rows, split squats, pistol squats, lunges, forwards, backwards, and sideways, step ups. It is pretty self-explanatory that unilateral exercises effectively give both sides of your body an equal workout. There is no dominant side in unilateral training. The alternation between sides imposes strict side-by-side -side isolation to enhance symmetry and good form. Unilateral exercises negate the physiological biases that occur in bilateral exercises, which train both limbs simultaneously. Lifts like the big three of barbell, squat, bench press, and deadlift have the potential for one limb to do more than its fair share of work. On unilateral lifts, however, your neuromuscular system learns to stimulate the muscles of both sides of the body. As a result, each limb must pull its own weight to complete the set. Another way to look at unilateral training is as an accessory to your main strength and size builders, the squat, the bench, the deadlift, and rows. You can push a lot of weight with these bilateral lifts and feel great doing it, but then you move on to unilateral exercises to refine movement patterns, avoid strength asymmetries, and develop an aesthetically balanced body as you fine tune your physique. Using unilateral work in this way means using them as accessory lifts to the main lifts. This is the ideal approach for most people, as it gives them the best of both heavy compound barbell work and higher rep targeted accessory work. This works to avoid muscle imbalances and keep your training varied, fun, and challenging. Fix number three, change your focus. Consider a change of mindset and a shift in less obvious approaches to the problem of imbalance. Correct technique and form are essential to making gains and staying healthy long-term. Many people suffer from a lack of true focus when training. They go through the motions and move weights from A to B. Sometimes it's not a lack of focus, more of a case of focusing on the wrong thing. Generally, lifters have an external focus. This means they concentrate on the weight they're lifting and getting it from the start to the end of the rep without a thought of which muscles are making it happen on big compound lifts, which involve multiple joints and muscle groups. Accessory or isolation work helps improve the mind-muscle connection that many bodybuilders talk about. Your accessory work can serve you well to become more internally focused. Taking an internal focus means you'll concentrate on the muscles that are moving the weight, the quality of their contraction, and the amount of tension being placed on those muscles. Strategically using an internal focus on unilateral, machine-based, or isolation exercises can help you bring up the weak links that efficiently contribute to your main lifts. This has two big benefits. Number one, it will help reduce muscle imbalances, and number two, it will improve your numbers for the big lifts as a knock-on effect. Fix number four, change your workout routine. That all leads nicely to the ultimate goal of fixing imbalances, which is seeing them as a constant and persisting part of training. This means you must strategically vary your workout routine to hold them at bay. Design your workout routines with the starting premise that imbalances, weak sides, dominant sides, and all the inherent problems that they bring have not escaped you. Treat symmetry and balance as significantly as you do size and strength. I don't think you can successfully reach your physique goals if you don't have balance. Utilize the tips in this article to help you design a well-balanced training program, but realize that if you keep doing the same thing forever, you will eventually develop imbalances. Changing your accessory lifts every four to eight weeks and selecting exercises to target a different area left underestimated in the previous plan is an excellent way to keep yourself one step ahead of the curve when it comes to muscle imbalances. It impacts our lives long-term, but that doesn't mean it is best left alone. I want you to leave this video with the primary understanding that everything good coming out of your training comes from good form and intelligent program design. 
Then by being strategic with the training tactics I've given you today, you can avoid muscle imbalances, or at the very least, keep them to an absolute minimum. Doing so will help you lift more weight and build an aesthetic body. It will also reduce your risk of injury so you can keep gaining size and increasing strength long-term. Did you find this video helpful? If so, click the like button below as it'll genuinely help out the channel. If your training and nutrition are in order and you're looking for a bit of an edge, be sure to check out my science-based supplement line. Each product was created using scientifically proven ingredients, all clinically dosed and guaranteed to produce results. And right now you can get 25% off your entire order, plus free shipping by using coupon code MONSTER at checkout. So head over to musclemonsters.com supplements or click the link in the description. And if you haven't already, make sure you subscribe for more videos and don't forget to turn on post notifications so you don't miss the next.